Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Today is going to be a bit of an update and review again on my Explorer running the Gearhead Auto Octane Tune. But stay tuned to the end of the video because there's a little bit of a grudge race that me and my buddy have. I'll put a timestamp in the description so if you want to skip this part, if the me talking about the Gearhead thing is not relevant to you and you just want to see the race, I'll put a timestamp in the description. You can click and skip ahead. But for those who are interested, tuning your Explorer, your show, Ford Flex, your EcoBoost platform in general. I already covered this in my last video on the Explorer and got some feedback on it. There might have been some confusion too that I'll try to clear up and uh, explain in a little more in depth about how certain things work. First of all, I'm not sponsored. This is a product I paid out of pocket for. This is just my honest opinion and experience from running their tune. This 2014 Explorer, it's a 3.5 EcoBoost twin turbo. I decided to spruce it up a little bit for a 4,700 pound SUV. I wasn't expecting a whole lot. To my surprise, the auto octane tune that Gearhead offers is pretty impressive. In the last video I did on this, there was some confusion, I think. If you order this through Gearhead, first thing to know is that when you receive the package and the tuner, the handheld tuner, your auto octane tune isn't installed on that device yet. You have to actually do that yourself. But first, you take that device and you'll plug that into your vehicle. You have to pull certain information from your vehicle and then send it to Gearhead. They'll have a link in the order confirmation when you make a purchase. It's a spec sheet. It's basically an information sheet about what's done to your vehicle, if anything. For me, I included the fact I have a K&N drop-in filter and I did a muffler delete on this. Those are the only modifications I've done, but I wouldn't call those really power gain. That spec sheet you'll fill out and it'll allow Gearhead to write the tune specific to your vehicle. So when you get your device, don't install whatever tunes on there because a lot of these tuners have a box tune or off the shelf tune that's just generic for that vehicle generation or whatever they want to call it. Don't install that because that's not specific. That's not the Gearhead Auto Octane tune. Also, you want to make sure when you purchase like the, the power pack, for example, it comes with step colder plugs. I opted to get the colder thermostat and then it has the three bar map sensor. You want to make sure that you install everything prior to the tune, but don't run the vehicle prior to the tune as well. So if you install the three bar map sensor and then try to drive the vehicle on the stock tune, it's not going to work. You're gonna have issues. So you wanna make sure it's all done at the same time. The tune is the last step and then you can drive the vehicle. Just an important note on that. And when you get an email from Gearhead after you fill out the spec sheet, cause there's certain information you'll need from your vehicle, like a vehicle strategy code, I believe, and some other things. And you'll be able to get that off the tuner by plugging it in initially. You're not tuning it. You're just pulling this information off the tuner. You'll write down whatever numbers, letters that correspond. They have what they need in the email and it'll tell you. And there's videos out there. I'm not gonna try to get too in depth into that. They even have links when they send you the tune, how to upload the auto octane tune onto the device and then you can take your device plug it into the vehicle and flash the tune onto your vehicle just a little bit of confusion i want to clear up on that last video just so people aren't buying this plugging it in thinking that's the tune it's not there's a bit of a process but it's manageable there's even sct uh, the company that makes these tuners they have videos out there on youtube that show you how to load a tune configuration onto your tuner and then install it on your vehicle. Another key note is when you fill out your spec sheet, you get that email that has your auto octane tune specific to your vehicle. You'll also have a file for the data log configuration. And what that means is when you're data logging your vehicle, like here, I'll show you right now, I have my tuner mounted right up here. This was a little suction cup on the window. Right now I'm currently data logged. Without that configuration file, the stock preset configuration file that comes on the tuner doesn't have certain parameters that you want to see that are specific to the auto octane tune. And what I mean by that is the auto octane tune, when you're data logging, there is a parameter you can watch called octane adjust ratio. It's labeled OAR and it reads in a negative number in a decimal form. So right now my octane adjust ratio is reading a negative 0.64. You can see right down here, that's in this lower left hand corner, negative 0.64. What does that mean? Well, that essentially means what octane the vehicle is sensing right now. It's the octane that I've been running in the vehicle. A little side note on this is that at least in my experience and based on talking to Matt with Gearhead, who has been phenomenal with trying to help me figure out what's going on. My vehicle might be a little more sensitive to octane than others, 
due to the mileage. In the area I live in, I only have 91 octane available as my highest. The auto octane tune can calibrate anywhere from 87 upwards to 95. Anything above and beyond that doesn't really increase the performance of your vehicle. It might be safer for like knock. It's overkill at that point. So how do I achieve 91? I do that by blending a little bit of E85 in the tank. This vehicle, other than the K&N drop-in filter and the muffler delete, is completely stocked, excluding the tune. The fuel system is only capable of pumping so much ethanol. These are direct injection motors, so you got a low pressure fuel pump in the tank and then you got a high pressure fuel pump under the hood. Based on my research and what I've seen even Matt say is that E15, so 15% ethanol content, is about the max you want to run if you're trying to achieve the highest octane adjust ratio. By highest, I mean if you want your vehicle to run what's on equivalent to 95 octane, for example, that number would read a negative 0.96. The best case scenario, it's sensing at least 93 to 95 octane. You're getting the most timing, the most boost, the most performance, and it makes a big difference because right now I'm at a 0.64. It's pulled timing, it's pulled boost, but it's done on its own. So that's the nice thing about it. If I fill up with 87, it's probably gonna drop even more. It drives just fine. It'll drop down to near stock levels, essentially, before you would say tune the vehicle, how you're used to driving it as it is. It just feels the same as that once you put 87 in it. You put 91, it increases a little bit, but to get the most out of the auto octane tune, I put a little bit of E85 in it. Now there's a lot of online calculators and I use one to calculate how much ethanol I'm putting in my tank because I don't want to overdo it. You don't want to stress your fuel pump. You'll run the risk of running lean, catastrophic if you keep running that. So E15 or 15% ethanol is what I like to see on my calculator before I fill up. So I'll usually do two to three gallons because the Explorer has an 18.6 gallon fuel capacity. So I'll do two to three gallons. And then the other important part is a lot of premium gas out there, like 91 octane that we have here. There are a lot of places that have 10% ethanol added to it and that contributes to your ethanol content. And at least in my experience, we have places that are 91 with no ethanol. I'll fill up with that to ensure that I don't have extra ethanol in the tank and then I'll put three, maybe three and a half gallons of E85 in the tank to achieve a higher octane of say 92, 93 octane. It's just really cool. You don't have to change a tune, it does it for you. And that's uh, a really nice feature about this tune and this company and what they've done with it. I'm going to be demonstrating now, I'm gonna run to the gas station I'm gonna put in about three gallons of some E85, top off the rest 91. We'll go out and drive. Sometimes it takes a while for it to adjust. I found in my experience, the quickest way to get your octane adjust ratio to quickly change to the fuel that you just put in the tank. I found if I go out on the highway, I'll slow down and I'll do moderate to slightly heavy throttle to where it's kind of loading the engine heavy. The octane adjust ratio really picks up quick. So I'm gonna go put some ethanol in and then we're gonna drive around. Right now I'm at a 0.64, like I said. My power is down from where it could be. And then I wanna get it back up because we're gonna line up with my buddy's Jeep and see where we sit. I, I know we did a video on this and his Jeep. It's the SRT with the, I think it's a Pro Charger on it. That's like a five, 550 something, 600 horse uh, Jeep. Obviously I'm not expecting to win, but it's gonna be a kind of neat comparison to see three gallons of E85, sorry if that's blurry. Now the octane of E85 can vary quite a bit. I've seen anywhere from 100 to 113, 108, 105 seems to be the norm. The remaining amount in my tank is 15.6 for a full tank. It's of 91 octane with 0% ethanol because I did ethanol free. Gives us a total of 18.6 for full capacity. We should be approximately 93.3 octane or E14 or just under 14% ethanol. It's 13.7. And like I said, 15% is about the max you want to do. You could probably go a little higher, but that's on your own terms. Don't blame me or Gearhead for doing that yourself. You could strictly just stay running 91 or depending on your location, I know they have 93 available. And if that's the case, I know it's more expensive. This is cheap alternative to getting a higher octane. It's just kind of a gamble of the quality E85 and how well you can blend the fuel. I'm gonna put some miles on it now, driving it nicely for a little bit just to get the fuel through the system and then I'll show you how I drive it to get the octane adjust ratio to quickly change. All right, so I'm out driving around. I reset my trip and I'm at six miles on this trip since I put that ethanol in. It's already adjusted, I wish I would've caught it, but uh, it, it does happen quick when you do it this way. So here's my trip. I don't know if you can see that, 6.4 miles. 
and my octane adjust ratio is up to a 0.82 which again the higher that number up to 0.96 means more timing more boost so it's already kicking in um, I'll demonstrate here in a second of what I do I just go kind of a moderate to heavy throttle to lug the engine essentially another parameter that I watch is the knock sensors and positive knock means it's pulling timing because it's it's preventing your engine from detonating and causing knock and causing catastrophic issues the knock sensors are there to do that job negative knock means it's wanting to add timing and the more negative knock you see the quicker that octane adjust ratio will quickly change to wherever it needs to be so we're at 7.3 miles now and you can see my octane adjust ratio is 0.82 watch the knock sensor as I put a slight load on it now if I maintain that see it's increasing and now if I let off boom octane adjust ratio went to 0.96 so right now we're gonna see the max timing the max boost let's do a quick 40 roll here just to see Now that we have the octane adjust ratio reading where we want it to read negative uh, 0.96 I'm going to try a little acceleration run from a standstill with a slight brake boost just to see what we can get for a 0 to 60. I'll put up a little timer though just to see exactly what kind of time we ran on that spun the tires a bit I did a bit of a brake boost too uh, you don't want to go crazy on brake boosting your stuff with this tune um, you just run the risk of breaking things so uh, do it at your own risk it is fun but it can break things so <laughs> stay tuned for the race I'm gonna go two grand probably okay I am ready Oh, I don't have a horn. Okay, I'll honk it. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got beat hard. <laughs> Oh man, you still there? Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I, I totally slept. Yeah. I, I totally, no, that's you fine. You still walk by me, so that was that was a good run. When you were when you honk, I heard double honks because of the audio. So it was like beep 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 beep. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was like, oh shit! Like I don't know which one to go on. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, whip around and do uh, a twenty. Let's, let's go at this yellow pole. Just go out the yellow pole. Yep, you got the record. Yep. I'm at 22. Windy out right now. Yo, yeah, well, dude, my wings, my ears are whistling. Yeah, that's I, I, I could hear it. I thought that was me, yeah. but it was just coming through the uh, speakers on mine. Let's do one more and see if I can chase you down. Give me more of a hit. Yeah. Okay. Good one, good one. 
We don't want to fly this now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, we went the speed limit. This is all CGI, okay? That's what I meant, yeah.